It's been a long journey, still not over. So many landmarks, each a tombstone. That, ladies and gentlemen, was an extract of a poem written by a mother weeping over the death of her son, whom she lost in the internal conflict in Sri Lanka. You may recall that my country, Sri Lanka, for the past 30 years until 2009, struggled with the conflict that lost more than 80,000 precious lives and left a million others homeless and refuge. A decade ago, I too experienced this fear of violence and threats. The bombs were many. There was much uncertainty about my life. My parents lived in fear that I wouldn't come home and I lived in fear that they wouldn't. The fear and devastation that you experienced recently at the London Parliament Square was something that we encountered time and again for 30 years. I was fortunate enough to have survived, but in my paradise home, this was not the case for millions of women, including those who lost their spouses and mothers who lost their children. So clearly, as women don't really get a chance to speak, as you may see this evening. <laughs> I believe it is my responsibility to address the women in conflict in their post-conflict situations. So this evening, I'm going to talk to you about those women, about their untold stories, about their unattained peace of mind. It's 2017 now. The conflict has ceased. No military confrontations, no refugee camps. But there are millions of women who are still struggling to have a dignified life, despite social taboos a dignified life in a male-dominated community and culture. These women are unrepresented, their stories untold and unheard. Meena Ma is a Tamil woman living in the northern province of Sri Lanka who lost her husband in the final stages of the war. My husband was lying on the ground and when I turned him around, his chest was open, he was dead. She says. Damianti is a Sinhalese woman living in Colombo who lost her two sons in a bomb blast that went off in 2007. I heard about the explosion and when I went in search of them, I saw their disfigured bodies amongst many others and I fainted, she cries. Meena Ma and Damianti are only two women of all those who are still struggling those widows, mothers and daughters whose battle to restore themselves is still not over after years of an end of the military confrontation. For them, the battle is not yet over. For them, peace is anything but a state of mind. For them, a white flag didn't mean the war has ended and that they could go back to living their day-to-day -day lives again. Their fear, insecurity, social stigmas and taboos have made them vulnerable to human trafficking, forced marriages and abuse. In Northern Sri Lanka, conservative culture dictates that a woman is first and foremost a housewife and the husband, the breadwinner of the family. But the sudden death of their spouses has forced them to come out of their social binds and often migrate for work even. This has often made them vulnerable to sexual abuse and violence. Meena Ma, like many widows, still wears a bindi, a red dot on her forehead to indicate that she is still married because she fears being e exploited otherwise. But see, all of this is not just about Sri Lanka. This happens in Syria, Palestine, Venezuela, Iraq, Congo and Somalia. These women are in need of food, shelter, security, and permanent livelihoods. They need a dignified life, 
I cannot stress this enough. They deserve one. Social stigmas that oppress these women need to be removed. As society, you and I have an untimely responsibility towards this evolution of prototype that will be key towards a better life for these women. Most importantly, rehabilitation isn't just about providing for their materialistic needs. The heart of rehabilitation lies in catering to their emotional needs, listening to their untold stories to ease their burden. Eight years have passed, and Sri Lankans have enjoyed free movement to, free movement to every part of the country. The, but the plight of these women who are still struggling has been swept under the carpet, and their destiny to enjoy the fruits of peace remains uncertain for all of us. Thank you. Speech. So uh, you talked about the state of affairs in your home country. I wonder if you care to comment on the affairs of the state now. Uh, what do you think the role of the state should be to ensure that women and pretty much everyone has a dignified life? Thank you very much, sir, for your question. That was an excellent one. I believe, in, in speaking in terms of my country, a country that founded 30 years of war should be able to provide the same enthusiasm towards the after effect of founding such a war. So I believe certainly the methods I told you, such as these materialistic needs, should be definitely catered to. And on a second level, I would like to address the fact that psychosocial needs are a very prominent need in this context. And most hospitals, mostly in the north, do not have these such accommodation facilities. So I believe it is a necessary state of the government to specially address things like this that, will, that is absolutely crucial to date, even after so many years have passed. Thank you, I believe I answered your question. You spoke about a very specific issue for women in, in your country. Do you think that the international women's movement or the feminist movement, as many would describe it, uh, caters towards those women? And if so, do you think that there should be more education for a place for, the, for women from your country within that movement? Or do you think it doesn't represent them? Thank you so much. Uh, yes, we do see many, many movements uh, from the uh, women's, for, in terms of catering for women's rights. And yes, I do believe there's a very uh, a big lack of women representatives from our country in these international boards. And yes, in order to cater to women's needs, yes, they're in, especially in a context like this where a conservative um, society is what is a day-to-day -day life, day-to-day -day occurrence. So yes, I believe to break these social binds, there is a dearth of women in these international um, uh, international um, uh, platforms. So I would request and I would love to see a day where there would be a larger uh, predominance of Sri Lankan women in these international platforms. Thank you. Hi, so you spoke about uh, the, the problems for women in your country. What would you say people in other countries could do to help those women? Thank you very much, sir. So certainly from World War I to World War II, we, countries have been forming allies to um, fight wars. So I believe if countries can form allies to fight wars, they should be able to come together to solve problems in other countries as well. So certainly I believe uh, we have to um, address this, uh, this issue, not only as considering our border of our country, but also to go beyond that. Because certainly there may be countries that may not exactly cater to this issue, but neighboring countries that do. So I believe international, um, interna there needs to be an international uh, platform where people do, from other communities, have an un unending um, responsibility, international governments, uh, towards catering to this problem. I believe you answered your question. Thank you, sir.